When Armstrong was growing up here, the town looked pretty much the same. He fished in the Auglaise River, was a science bug in high school, worked afternoons in Brading's drugstore. The family had moved around a lot after Neil's birth in 1930, but they came back to Wapakoneta to stay in 1945. People who remember young Armstrong did not regard him then as someone special, but all their memories are fond ones, and he reciprocates. After Gemini 8, Armstrong came back for a parade in a pageant and found signs bearing his name all over town. You're my people, he told them. I'm proud to be one of you. Proudest of all are the residents of 912 Neil Armstrong Drive, Wapakoneta, Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Armstrong. He was interested in airplanes from the time he was a little boy. Uh, his mother bought him a 20-cent airplane in a 10-cent store, and he built that. Then from the 20 cent, he went to a 50 center and went on up, and pretty soon he was building with motors and flying them and testing them. And, and of all the subjects that he took, of course, there was always all the math he could get and all the science he could get. But I can truthfully say he loved school. He loved, I think he loved every subject. I really do. Possibly Neil's outstanding project, for which I remember him best, is his work in connection with study of av aviation and the building of a, a uh, wind tunnel. Well, he built it so strong that it caused great currents in the home and, and uh, of course, vibrated the whole home. It was one of those things that he uh, enjoyed most, and uh, Mr. Kreitz, his teacher, was uh, very instrumental in helping him. We have a small airport just out of town here, about three miles. And before Neil was old enough to drive a car to get his license, he uh, became interested in aviation. He worked at the drugstore and he'd leave there, take his wheel right out to the airport. And he would talk with those, work with them. And uh, at about 16 then, he bought an old wreck of a plane, which he uh, rebuilt. And he was flying that plane at 16 years of age before he was old enough to get his license. After he uh, graduated from high school, he uh, decided to go to Purdue University because of the aeronautical uh, program that they offered in the degree. Armstrong mastered everything that flies. He became a Navy jet pilot, a glider expert, and before becoming an astronaut, was one of the top test pilots in the country. He flew both the B-52 mothership and the X-15 rocket plane. He took an X-15 higher than 200,000 feet at a speed of 4,000 miles an hour. Oh, my. I can remember how, how scared I was when he first flew from the, uh, the airport to um, the university. When, uh, let's see, before school started, why they need to go in a week or so ahead of time and make all their preparations. And so he flew this particular time. And, and I know he said, now, Mom, when I go over the house, when I waggle my wings, you know I'm saying hi to you. And so um, I can remember how scared I was. You know, I said, well, how will you find the place to land? Oh, he said, I'll find it. And he did, of course. And, of course, you have those fears with each advancement as he went along. Why, you have those same fears. But, of course, he, he always um, was so confident himself that he made you feel, made us feel like he'd get along all right. He was a boy that never said much. He just, uh, action spoke louder than words, and he was always constantly from a little boy off. Collins had been a wrestler and a baseball and football letterman in high school. At the manned spacecraft center in Houston, he vies with astronaut Walter Cunningham for the handball championship. The competition is fierce. Collins usually wins. Collins is 5'11", 165 pounds, looks scrawny, and is balding. He is not talkative, although compared to his companions on Apollo 11, he is garrulous. He is, as most astronauts are, a test pilot. He is an Air Force lieutenant colonel, has two daughters and a son, and says he has one overriding concern, all the publicity he will get as a result of the moon mission. 
Collins is an alumnus of St. Albans School, the rather exclusive academy attached to the Episcopal Cathedral in Washington. President Johnson's daughters went to the girls' academy there, and both schools have had more than their share of famous graduates. But Collins is well remembered as person, athlete, and friend. Mike is a very quiet, self-effacing <clears throat> kind of fellow. Uh, <clears throat> I'd <clears throat> characterize him as the kind of fellow who does rather than talks. I first <clears throat> met him in 1944 <clears throat> when we were in school together at uh, St. Albans School in, in Washington. Mike was <clears throat> extremely well-liked, popular with both the students and the faculty at the school there. He had virtually every honor that a student at that particular school can have. The yearbook is called The Albanian. This is the school seal and the year 1948 that Mike graduated. There's Mike and there's me and I hope that our taste in ties has improved since then. Here's a picture as Mike is a member of the Athletic Association that governed the giving of letters and athletic awards. Here's a page uh, List, uh, listing the varsity letter winners showed that he, he lettered in football and uh, <clears throat> was captain of the wrestling team with a star to show that he wrestled in the Lehigh tournament. And here's a picture of the baseball team. And here's Mike right on the, right on the end. They're wearing a very determined look on his face. The St. Albans class prophecy said Collins would be a soldier. That was safe. His father was a general. His uncle was the famous General Lightning Joe Collins. His older brother is a brigadier general of paratroops. I think Michael always had in mind that he wanted to be in the military service, particularly to go to West Point. And I think that he, during this time, before he went into uh, went to West Point, he spent a great deal of his time and effort in preparing himself for a military career. He was bound for West Point uh, <clears throat> from the day he was born, as far as I know. Certainly all the time I knew him. Michael hasn't talked to us terribly much about what he desired to do in the astronaut program itself. I think primarily because he's been pretty busy being an astronaut, and the rest of us have been pretty busy doing other things. But uh, I do know that he is, he at one point told me he wanted to be the outside man on the moon. <laughs>